Good morning to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It's Monday, August 31st, the last day of the month. I'm uh, going to keep this fairly short today because i got a lot to do. We'll get into more details that I usually do on the Monday update uh, tomorrow, Tuesday. I'm just trying to look at where my water was because my throat is getting scratchy from all the traveling and talking I've been doing. I feel good. Don't worry about that. But I am tired. It's time to get some serious sleep. So let's get this over with, and I'll start making my way back to North Carolina, shall we? All right, looking at the satellite animation, a few things to look at. There's 99L, probably going to try to develop some as it heads towards Central America over here. Uh, then we have Invest 90L, probably going to try to develop some as it heads out in this general direction. All of this other energy out in the open, deep tropics is available to develop somewhere. We just don't know where. That they're not developing out here is not necessarily good news because this piece of energy is going to end up over here somewhere. This one might end up over here. This one could come up and maybe go out. Who knows? The bottom line, i got to remind you of this, we do have these impulses, and even though they're not developing here, you got to put a big question mark. Maybe they develop over here. Maybe they get into the East Pack and eventually go up and affect the Baja. Who knows? So, interesting pattern. We're not having a real major uptick in activity, but things are still kind of busy. Just because you don't have a hurricane on the map doesn't mean that it's not a busy time. And I think you understand that. And we can look at this, too, through the vorticity signature of our different features. Lots of energy stretched out over a huge area, but nothing really focusing just yet. There's 99L trying to focus. There's 90L off the southeast coast also trying to bundle its energy. And we can look at these at the uh, different uh, zoom levels here from the weathernerds.org site. And clearly, 90L trying to wrap up here off the North Carolina, South Carolina coast. Any mariners out here, fishermen going out into the Gulf Stream and beyond, be very mindful. You know, if you're leaving Hatteras or Ocracoke, uh, Wilmington, Myrtle Beach, Charleston, whatever, this is out there. And it's, you know, pretty substantial weather system compared to your boat. Right? So just, you know, it's not going to affect land directly. There might be some swells as this develops and move off, moves off this way. You get these swells that radiate out back towards the coast. Those can be fun to play in and surf in, but just be mindful of that, that it could create uh, a higher risk of rip currents. And rip currents can kill you. So please be careful with that. We want you around. All right, in the Caribbean, we do have 99L. Also trying to wrap up here, slowly doing so. Generally going to move off in this direction. So you folks in Jamaica, probably the northern part of the tropical system, the tropical wave there, the energy, going to bring you some inclement weather over the next couple of days. Uh, maybe a few thunderstorms, gusty winds from time to time. Luckily, though, not a hurricane. So that's generally the pattern in terms of what we're looking at uh, with the Atlantic. Nothing really pressing you know, we got a few days before we have to really worry about anything. I think the, the main concern is going to be this guy right here, 99L. And the general area that it looks like it's moving towards is somewhere here in Central America. There's too much of a high-pressure area to the north up here for this to get into the Gulf. I'm almost certain of that. You never say 100% ever. But I'm fairly certain there's just not the pattern in place. It's not there to get this to come up into the Gulf or affect... Uh, even the northeast Yucatan. It's not impossible, a non-zero chance. But all in all, I think 99L is headed for this direction, and 90L is heading out here, and we don't really have to worry about any of these right now. All right? So uh, just to talk about Patreon again real quick, you guys, you did it. You seriously blew me away. You exceeded my expectations. This whole idea of crowdfunding and effort, and remember, this is what I do for a job. And i got to figure out a way to do two things. Support my family, that's first and foremost. I have a right to earn a living just like everybody else. I happen to be an entrepreneur. I've done this for two decades. It's gone through many different iterations and evolutions of how I have been able to support my family and fund the work. We've had sponsorships. I've had big contracts to do projects for companies, even the government and, uh, and the media. You know, lots of different ways. But now, in 2020, we are firmly in the age of crowdfunding, 
Everybody knows what that is for the most part, especially the younger generation coming up. You definitely know about it. Tips. You know, you put tips in, you support somebody, a little tip on the YouTube or the Twitch, a contribution, a donation, Kickstarter. We know all about it. This is a sustainable way for me to do what I do. And in return, it affects the greater good. We contribute to the science. We contribute to the educational aspect of everything. And it is crowdfunded. Reminds me a lot of public radio, where you have supporters, sustaining members of a cooperative who make public radio possible to everyone. So at the end of the day, we try to make as much possible as we can. But then we have these levels. And the $10 level is really popular. And this gets you access to all of the live cameras, including this amazing tracking map here that one of our very own supporters, Will Woodgate, and a good friend of mine, Jason, he doesn't necessarily want me to talk about his last name, so that's fine, uh, up in Raleigh. And one of our supporters, Howard Simons, he contributed his knowledge in Internet things that I don't know about, coding, okay? And then we had input from our users, our group of supporters, and we have created this incredible enhanced tracking map. These are the cameras that we set up for Lara, and it's remarkable. Let's zoom in real quick here. I left these up because I wanted to show you this. These are the placeholders of the cameras. None of them are operational right now. They're all taken down or, they, or the network's down, uh, but this is what it looked like. And the ability to spread them out, I mean, we put about, what, 11 or 12 total cameras up? Unbelievable. I mean, just this is a dream come true for me. Each of these camera systems, except for the one at Showpeak, had a pressure sensor in it. I forgot to put it in that one. Oh, it's okay. You're not going to be perfect every time. Every one of these cameras had a pressure sensor. We've been collecting those, and that's why it's so important that we get the one in Cameron back, because the eye of Laura came right over Cameron. Okay, so we got to get that one back. We're working on it. We've got some good leads. I think it's going to have a positive outcome. I'm hopeful. And then we had one all the way over here in Grand Isle. That was the starter. It, it was actually set up for Marco. But the bottom line here, this is it. If you want to get involved, this is how you do it. It is the future of not just hurricane coverage, but other high-impact weather events. Winter storms, if you're into winter storms, nor'easters, lake effect snow, Flooding, when we have a big flood event, we could spread these cameras out over a huge area and really help emergency management, law enforcement, the media, to be able to give this to the media. Why not? You know, you go, well, they should pay for it. But if we can give it to the media and not have to go through a bunch of red tape and it is supported by the crowdfunding effort, then more people can see it through that media. And it just creates a full circle here of positivity and results. Uh, so, you know, you guys really exceeded my expectations, but we're not done. We've got some incredible ideas that we're getting ready to implement that I'm going to talk about tomorrow. I'm going to announce it to my supporters first and then to the general public, a true revolution in ground-based crowdsourcing of data. Wait till you hear this. I, I started it 15 years ago with, uh, actually 16 years ago with the Hurricane Landfall Project that grew out of Hurricane Charlie, scaring the pants off of us, that we're never going to sit in a truck again in a Cat 4 hurricane to get data. You don't have to, especially now with the miniaturization of the technology. But what we have done in that 15 years or so, 16 since Charlie, but especially since 05, is truly remarkable. And I might be the face of it. Hi. Uh, yes. But the people behind me are incredibly talented the advice they give, the efforts they put in, this graphic right here designed by one of our supporters. It gives me a chance to focus on the mission. I don't have to worry about the funding as much. Awesome. We still want to grow this and make it as big as it could possibly be. We're going to be looking for investors to help this grow and get some advertising going on social media. And as I wrap this up, I want you to consider one thing. The growth that I experienced of this project, mainly on Wednesday, as Laura was making landfall, was 100% organic. I didn't have a television interview on the Weather Channel. 
I was not on MSNBC or Fox News or whatever during the event. It was after the event that I was on CBS and Fox News and MSNBC and some other ones uh, that reached out to me, BBC, all after landfall. During the day Wednesday, the 26th, the amazing growth was because of the internet and social media. I didn't boost a post. I did not have a sponsored post. My YouTube grew by 7,000 subscribers, all organic. Imagine if we had the investment to advertise and boost what we're doing, what we could do. We could literally start a new company that would revolutionize online weather coverage very much like the Weather Channel did with John Coleman and others uh, back in the early 80s. It's not a goal to replace the Weather Channel. Absolutely not. But the age of the Internet-based weather observation, education, and science is upon us. Augment the idea of the Weather Channel onto the Internet, and it's all crowdfunded with little to zero advertising. Can you imagine that? Not having to be interrupted by commercials? The occasional shout out to companies who are helping us out, sure. But not three minutes of commercials. No overlays. No annoying ads. I understand advertising drives that. But we don't have to. Because we are in the age of crowdfunded support. Something to think about. If you want to get involved, that's how you do it. Patreon.com slash hurricane track all right i'm excited and i want you to be too so again thank you very much for getting us here now let's change it from the hurricane highway to the hurricane superhighway who's with me i'm mark Suddeth. thanks for watching i'll have more for you tomorrow